So I will not live in fear. And I encourage you to do the same, brethren. Uh, it's not Christian to live in fear. It is Christian to be wise, to be prudent. Absolutely, that's... But not to have fear. It's Christian to be bold and strong. And let me take you to the words of Matthew. Um, let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 6. I hope people are bringing their own Bibles. I know people have Bibles on their phones now. Everyone has a Bible on their phone, I think. Most people do, if they have those types of phones. Matthew six twenty six. It says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they do not sow, neither do they reap, nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought or worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? And why do you consider your clothes for the lilies of the field? Look at them, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed like one of these. In other words, Jesus is saying, do not worry. Don't worry. And people say, well, yeah, okay, that's, that's fine, but what about people who've died? What about those ones who've died? What about Pastor Carol um, in, in America who died? Well, what about it? Where is she now? She's with the Lord. The reality of our faith tells us, gives us an assurance that there's a heaven for those who are Trusting in Jesus as Lord and Savior. There's a hell to shun. There's a heaven to gain. And so, if we're in faith, we can be confident of that reality. And we, we must do that. Because all before me, and before us, in the news, on the media, every com the, the conversations that we hear are fear-filled. But that's not for us, friends. That's not for us, brothers and sisters, is it? Never. Never for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never, ever, ever. Has anyone here read the Fox's book on martyrs? One hand up. Two hands. Anyone else? No one else read Fox's book of martyrs. Well, that's a tremendous book that tells about the early church and the martyrs throughout the, the history of the Christian church and how they, how they lived for the Lord with confidence and how they died for the Lord with confidence in this land and around the world. It speaks of uh, people who've given everything up for Jesus and so they've abandoned their lives on this world and that's the call of God for us. An abandonment. And that's the testimony that we heard about from Ian in Revelation. The word of their testimony. The testimony is, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And I'm living for him now. So I'm going to live bold, confident, full of faith, vibrant in him. So, brothers and sisters, I just wanted to invite everyone, if you have a testimony to share, to come up this morning we haven't seen each other for a while. People have, uh, have got testimonies to share, and I wanted us to share those testimonies this morning. If you'd like to share a testimony, Louise is the first. We saw this lovely testimony that Louise recorded. Um, did anyone see it on Facebook? I thanked her on the way in today because it was a beautiful testimony. Uh, yeah, I did share it on WhatsApp, really. So oh, WhatsApp, yeah. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Luis. I'm just going to say a few words based on the, on the testimony, if I could, as way of um, no set sermon as such today, just a few comments on testimonies. It was what I felt I would do. Um, just to say this, that touches on hearing the voice of the Lord because you, you'd found a car, you were going to the garage, Ah, but then you got an idea to go something else. Well, guess where those ideas come from? That's the, that's the Lord putting ideas. So hearing from the Lord, this is the key. And distinguishing what's the Lord's voice is very important. So uh, every one of us in here who's a Christian is hearing from the Lord. Because Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. He doesn't say, my sheep might hear my voice, or my sheep possibly might on a good day with the wind hear my voice. <laughs> he says, my sheep hear my voice. Jesus says that. How many of us believe Jesus? We hear his voice Because the scriptures teach that we hear his voice. The question is, can we distinguish his voice? Ah. Ah, so we definitely hear his voice. The Bible says, how do we learn to distinguish his voice? Through his word, through spending time with him. We learn to distinguish his voice from the other voices because we are all hearing his voice. So this touches on that aspect to hear his voice. It's, it's like this, isn't it? You should, this so often, but it's such a good illustration. I'll touch on it again. In this room right now, there's Christmas music playing. In this room right now, is jazz music playing. There's classical music playing in this room right now. And there's rock music playing and all manner of other types of music playing in this room right now. But you won't hear them unless your receiver is tuned in to those radio stations. The music is in the room. The Lord is speaking to us. It's our responsibility then 
to tune in. And the reason why people don't hear from the Lord, or they think they don't hear from the Lord, they don't distinguish His voice, is because they don't take time out of their lives. Taking time out of our lives is vital. There's no shortcuts. We just have to take time out. Say, I'm not going to do this. I'm taking time out. If the phone rings, I'm not interested. I don't care who it is. I'm not interested. I'm taking time out to hear from the Lord. A Christian who doesn't take time out to hear from the Lord is in a very unhealthy position, my friends. Because how else can we hear from the Lord? There's all manner of voices going on. The news is pouring into us. Our friends. And just because they may attend church, it doesn't mean to say they're speaking the right things. <laughs> we need to hear from him directly, each one of us, for our own lives. Are you with me this morning? Oh, good. Thanks all four of you. I know it's a little cold. I know it looks grey outside. But let me ask the question again. Uh, we need to hear from the Lord individually for our own lives. Are you with me this morning? Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and take it home this afternoon. And think about it. And the testimonies. And this season, you know, we've been talking about hearing from the Lord all throughout this season, haven't we? Micah is going to be sharing on Wednesday about hearing from the Lord. I'm looking forward to it. But, but I, as I've been reflecting on this year, I'm amazed at how often this has come up. This has been the theme of the year, hearing from the Lord. I mean, it was in January, almost 12 months ago, that we had that meeting in our house. We had the meeting and we said, well, what, what are we going to do? What's happening? I said, listen, what I know for sure is that God is going to change this church this year. I know that for sure. Things have to change this year. I just know that. And the day that we chose was March the 22nd. And on March the 22nd, something happened for the first time in British history. It had never happened before that the churches were closed down. That's the first time it happened in Christian history. In the history of this nation, it hadn't happened before. But we said this in January. We said, March the 22nd will be the day that the church changes its emphasis into more of a body ministry where everyone takes up their role and their call in God and moves in that area. I mean, that is spectacular. I, I really, I, I, I'm just thrilled how gracious God is to us as a fellowship. There may not be thousands around us this morning, but I'm telling you, I don't know of any other church in Great Britain, or anywhere else for that matter, that in January this year said March the 22nd marks a complete change for our church. March the 22nd, everything changes. I mean, that's shouted stuff, brothers and sisters. <laughs> That tells me, that tells me that God is really directing us and showing us and helping us. He cares for us. And he wants a response from us to that. And listen, he will go with us as far as we will allow him to go. And, and because the call of God is, is here for, for us. And is for each individual. And God is going to reveal that to each individual as we spend time before him. But unless we spend time before him, nothing will change. We knew that because we went to God and spent time with God. That's how that happened. We live in a different house now because we spent time with the Lord and, and he directed us. I mean, that's how that happened. And it's, it's, he's full of surprises. And what's he saying to you this week? 
What's he said to you? One thing with God I know for sure is living with God is a life full of direction from God and often those are surprises. Life with God is an adventure in faith, isn't it? The other part of the testimony uh, that Louise has uh, shared with us is, is about tithing. Well, God wants to prosper us. Of that, we have no doubt. He loves us. And it's not limited to finances, of course it's not. It's in every area. But one of the things about that testimony is the, the vital aspect of tithing. Now, since this year, I want to tell you, the tithes to the church... The offerings are down close to, Ian tells me, close to 50% down. And that's a great concern for me as the pastor. Close to 50% down. And I'll tell you why it's a great concern to me as the pastor. It's that so many people are missing out on God's best. And we've talked about uh, the tithe in the New Testament. I've given studies on that. You can look those studies up. It's a, it's a minimal guide, really, the tithe. But I just consider, how, what about those people who are missing out then? If, if we're down almost 50%, that means almost 50% of people are somehow uh, unplugged to the church system unplugged to God's system and when they unplug themselves from the system God's way of doing things they can miss out on, on the blessing that I've known that has been tithing and living that way um, because if you want to know where someone's heart is you look to where they spend their money you know um, and how they and for us, I've got to say, first time, I, I wouldn't, everything would be secondary to the tithe. Everything. Uh, because God honors that. He rebukes the devourer for the tither's sake, Malachi teaches. And there's nothing that I've seen that changes that in the New Testament. So I would encourage everyone, listen. Part of your service to God is to uh, serve the church with the first fruits, the tithe. Don't uh, allow fear, and I think it's fear, fear of lack, to stop you from doing that. Because it will in fact rob you of the blessings of God. Don't allow that to happen. Uh, when we have communion, which we're going to have shortly, uh, the uh, tithes will be taken at the same time. So people can have communion. And there's a tithing box here. Um, and it is a box, not the plates. Um, so after you receive communion, uh, you have an opportunity to give uh, the tithe there. Is there anyone else who would like to share a testimony? Macy. Thank you. 
book. So I felt I should write scriptures and put them in her lunchbox so that when she opened them and read them, it would encourage her in the middle of the day because that's when she felt a bit bad. So I was doing this for a little while. Maisie was picking up scripture and reading them to her classmates. Hold, stop there a sec. Can everyone hear okay? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, good. Thanks. So Macy was reading these scriptures to her classmates and they were listening and some days they were even asking her if they were being quiet and waiting for her to read these scriptures. My mom had asked Macy to read Psalm 91 and to memorize it. And if you haven't read Psalm 91, please go home and read it today. It's brilliant scriptures in the Bible mm. and it really relates a lot to COVID Thank you, Father. and has protection over us. Yes. So I was writing bits of Psalm 91 each day for Macy to learn, and the one I set one day was about God protecting us from the fiery darts of the enemy. And that day, Macy read the scriptures to the children, but then she took time to explain it, and she felt they could understand when they were really reading what the scripture had to say. Now then, Macy had a girl and a couple of girls in her house, but one girl specifically that was talking to you, and she you want to share about what, what she had said? Um, my friend had been telling me that she'd had these not very nice thoughts from the enemy, and I explained to her that... And she thought they were from God, didn't she? Yeah, she thought they were from God. Did you explain they're not from God, they're from the enemy? Yeah, and I said about... Um, I reminded her of the scripture about the, fl- about the fiery darts, and I think it was the same day, or the next day, she had told me that um, when... Her dream was about Jesus coming, and the previous day, or the same day, I had, I had told her about the angel that I saw, um, and it could have been Jesus, and she um, said in the dream, Jesus looked exactly how I explained it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows you like, the knock-on effects. I felt God wanted me to put scriptures in Macy's lunchbox. Macy was reading the scriptures out to the children. It allowed a period of time for Macy to minister to one of the girls. That girl could have gone home and shared with her family, but Macy shared with her. When we share and do what God wants us to do, you don't know how far it'll reach out to, to other people. Absolutely. There'll many more opportunities for Macy to share. And I'm sure she'll start a little church or something in that school. <laughs> 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 I want to say, you know, that I tell the children this, and this applies to all the children, okay? Um, uh, if, if when you go to school, because, you are, because you're believers, you are above the other children, okay? Now, I don't mean this in a prideful way. I just mean this because the Bible teaches that we then have God's wisdom and understanding on things. And I find that so many of the children um, don't have, at times, a very good input in the house. There's a lot of difficulties in homes. And the families are, are, are broken, fractured families, fractured homes, confused, uh, difficult and the precious little ones sometimes offer direction to those other little ones. So as a little one in Living Faith Church, I want to say to you, you're a light to your friends. You are a light to your friends. Your wisdom to your friends. Now, they won't fall about and say necessarily, oh, you're so wonderful, you're, you're such a light, you're so... They won't do that, don't expect that necessarily. But I'm telling you the truth. And listen to me and remember this. God is using your words to help your friends. And those words can be a tremendous encouragement to your friends. We've talked this morning about not fearing. Your words can build faith in your friends. They can encourage your friends to do more than they otherwise would and to perhaps even be more than they otherwise would. So your words are so powerful. We heard from Ian this morning, from Revelation, about they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And the word of the testimony, you know, 
is in everyday conversation. People think the word of the testimony is some grand thing necessarily. It's not necessarily the case. The testimony, the word of their testimony is the everyday conversation that we have. How are you doing? Well, there are challenges. However, I thank God because he is helping me in all things and the Bible tells me I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. For example, you see, we're the ones who are the positive ones. We're the ones who are always looking to the positive side. We're the yes we can people of this world. Amen? We're the, we're the buoyant people of this world. Hey, Jesus said, if the salt loses its saltiness, what's it good for? Nothing. Nothing. Just to be thrown out. And what do you do with a light? Where do you put the light? And under the table? Behind the corner? Where do you put the light? Where it can be seen. That's why when we were in San Francisco, I said, let's get in the limousine and go there. And we turn up to that district in the limousine. Get out of the limousine in the district. And all the poor people, they're living on the streets there. They need what I've got. What good is it if I'm trying to be like them, dressed all like rags and everything else and trying to communicate to them? I'm not doing that. I'm getting out of the limousine. And I tell you what, they want to talk to us. They wanted to talk to us. We had a great impact there. We're still having an impact there through the church that we established there. <laughs> there's, there's a tremendous impact in that place. It's a remarkable thing that happened. But how does it happen? Because we took it by faith. We took that stuff by faith. I like the testimony, you know. There's a lovely man in America. He wrote a book. <laughs> it's a great book. The title is, is uh, interesting. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Leroy Thompson, Money Cometh. And he wrote this book. And he said one day, you know, he was driving around you know, he was in one of those um, ghetto areas. So he's in the ghetto area, and he said uh, <laughs> he was with a, a man, um, I think it was uh, Dr. Bill Winston, if you've heard of him. And he was with him, and they were driving around this ghetto area. Well, guess what car they were driving in? It was a lovely convertible Rolls Royce. Now there they are, two ministers driving in a lovely convertible Rolls Royce. Well, of course, the religious mindset would say, oh, how dare they? How dare they drive a car like that, those two ministers? And in a ghetto area as well. But they were driving that car, and it was a ghetto area. And when they pulled up to the traffic lights, the young men on the street corner who would, other, who would be selling drugs, and whose only peers were the drug dealers and the gangsters and the like, came over to the car and said, wow, we like this car. What, oh, you know, oh, you like the car? Oh, yeah, well, let's talk to you about the car. Yeah, let's talk. And they were able to share the gospel with them. N not religion. They didn't share religion. They shared the gospel of the kingdom of God with them and impacted those lives in a tremendous way. Those young people didn't have anyone else that they could look up to. They needed people to look up to. Christians should be the people that people can look up to. Set an example. Show a way forward. God's called us to that. Whether it be in an area like that or some other way. What I'm saying is, we should never shy away from the blessings that God's given us. He gave them good minds to do business ideas. They've done them and they've been successful. Never apologize for God's blessing. Celebrate it. It'll inspire others. If it puts some other people off, well then they've got some real issues. And you don't, you know, need to worry about people like that. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have this opportunity to come to this table now, the Lord's table, and I invite Pastor Dennis to come up and lead us as we do so. Oh, a test my apologies. 
Sorry, everyone, I apologise. Gwenda has a testimony. I didn't see. You take your time, Gwenda. You're doing a fine job. Oh, this one? Amen. Yes, and uh, if, you know, if you've only just heard that, it may not appear as dramatic as it does to me because I've heard about Gwenda's brother for some time. And even this last year, there's been a few things that we've spoken about regarding him. So for me, the dramatic testimony that I've just heard, it really is dramatic. So thank you, Gwenda, for that. Yes, I, I, I appreciate that very much. Pastor Dennis. Thank you, Pastor. 